Okay, thank you. Um, as this Kevin mentioned, I'll be talking a bit about some improvements we made recently to the LFS find command. Uh, in particular, this work is related to a Jira ticket LU10378 and the need for a dash dash printf option for LFS find. Um, I'll be talking a bit about that ticket, uh, go over some of the new format directives that we've added, as well as give some simple examples of using those. And I'll take a little bit of time to just give a short overview of some of the code changes we've made for the implementation, and then talk a little bit about the potential improvements in future work that can be done. So the uh, Jira ticket itself uh, basically makes a case for adding a dash printf option. You know, initially, it, originally it was more uh, a case of that it would be really useful to have a dash ls option, but it would be even better if dash ls was simply implemented as a fixed format for dash dash printf and have something a bit more general. Um, so for something like this, um, you know, we're looking, we were looking to do things uh, to try to stay as compatible with people's expectations of the normal find command as we could. So for information that was not Lustre specific, we wanted to try to use the same uh, percent format directives that you would typically use for find. And then for Lustre specific info, we would need it to create some new directives. And so it was suggested that these directives be prefixed by, by percent capital L. Now, LFS find itself has already has many of the same options as a regular find command. You can search by different timestamps, A time, M time, C time, UID, group ID, file size and type, uh, et cetera. And it also includes a lot of luster specific search options. You can search by things like component count, near states, stripe size, stripe count, OST indexes, and quite a few others. But when it comes to the supportive actions, there's a very big difference the other way. Uh, find lets you run actions like exec, uh, dash ls, print, uh, you know, and then various uh, equivalent options that let you, you know, print or stuff directly to a file, the dash f print, dash fls. Whereas with LFS find, you basically have one choice, which is print things out. You can choose between a new line delimiter and a null character delimiter, but that's pretty much it. So what we've attempted to do is add the dash dash printf option uh, to LFS find. And here I've listed um, some of the basic sort of backslash escapes and percent directives. And these are ones that we tried to keep uh, sort of equivalent with the, the find command. We've added support for things like uh, you know, new line, horizontal tab, literal backslash. Uh, you've also got the same, you know, directives for lower percent sign. Uh, we've implemented several of the timestamp options, uh, percent lowercase a, c, and then those are printed in c time format. And then we also have an option to print timestamps in seconds since the epoch. So we have percent capital A at, and the others. So we don't support all of the different timestamp formats as fine does, but we've been tried to include some of the basic ones. Uh, we also have things like, you know, disk space in uh, 512 byte blocks, numeric user ID, numeric group ID, file permissions, file name, et cetera. Uh, the one thing that is, isn't standard with normal fine, you know, is we had, uh, in order to print the birth time, we used a percent uh, W. And that's sort of a convention that we chose. And then in addition to sort of the generic printf options, we added several that were for luster specific details. Uh, as I mentioned before, all of these begin with the percent uh, capital L. And so we've included support for things like uh, file stripe count, the FID, uh, directory hash type, a file starting OST index, or if it's a directory, it would be the MDT index for the directory. Uh, you can also list out all of the OSTs or MDTs that are associated with the file or directory, as well as the files pool, uh, numeric project ID, and stripe size. One thing that should be mentioned is for composite files, 
uh, some of these commands like stripe count, uh, OST pool, and things like that, they will print the information uh, based on the last instantiated component. So those options don't print uh, like the stripe count for every single component. They simply work on the last one that's been instantiated. Um, so here's some uh, base examples of what the, uh, you know, the how you might use this new option with LFS find. Uh, the top few lines, an example of where I created a, uh, a PFL file using the LFS at Stripe, and then I wrote 100 megabytes into it, so it would actually, you know, instantiate the components. And so, and then the command after that is an example where I just did a, in this case, I just did a find on the current directory for the sole purpose of picking up this one file, um, but had to print out the information for that file. And here you can see that we print out the stripe count matches eight, which is the last uh, component of our PFL layout, as well as the stripe size being four megabyte also matches that last component. Uh, the starting index is four, and that's the first OST that's assigned to the last component. Uh, and then percent L lowercase O will actually print out uh, all of the OST indices in a, in a simplified format. What we've basically done is just simply group them for each component and put it in square brackets. And then we give a list of all the OST indices. No. Now this opens up some new options for you know, system administrators to do things. You know. The lower two examples, you know, are some some uh, ideas of how you might want to use the new printf option. So, for example, you could search for use it to help search for improperly striped files. In the first one, I uh, created a few uh, example files, and then I searched for any files that had a size greater than 100 gigabytes and had to print out the name and the stripe count. And so, you could easily have something that goes through and searches to see that oh you know the file four has a stripe count of 16 that seems normal oh but file one only has stripe count one for a 100 gig file that should probably be striped a little wider you know or you could even do the opposite search for uh sizes that are small and print it out and look for say a small file in this case file five that has an unusually large stripe count maybe unnecessarily so as uh, you know, prior to that, those sorts of things, you basically have to do, um, it would be something more along the lines of uh, finding all the styles greater than 100 gigabytes, putting their, you know, either dropping those list of paths into a file or piping it to another command, which would then run LFS get stripe to get that information and then sort of sort through it that way. Uh, the code changes that we made uh, to implement this uh, were you know, relatively few. Um, we added a few changes to the, and the under Lester Utils LFS.c, and that was primarily for processing the new printf option. Uh, under the Lester API.h header, we had to add a couple of new fields to the struct uh, fine param structure to support this. And uh, most of the changes are contained within the liblustr api.c file. The vast majority of those are simply dealing with parsing the printf string and formatting the output. Uh, a few changes were made to the cb find init function to alter how the uh, to alter the flow of how metadata was gathered. Primarily because by adding this option, we're now in a situation where the metadata that you need to gather for searching isn't necessarily the same as the metadata needed to gather for printing. When you are only printing the path, then that well, was pretty straightforward. You just, all you cared about was gathering the information you needed to uh, check the search parameters you were searching on. And you always knew the path, so there was no additional changes that needed to be made there. Uh, here I took in a small code snippet, you know, to kind of show how things changed. Uh, for example, previously, if you were, say, searching for something based on project ID, if that parameter was set, then 
uh, the command would go ahead, open the file, it would make a call to get the project ID, and then it would make a comparison. Um, if it didn't match, then it uh, sort of aborted the search, moved on to the next file. Uh, it wouldn't print out the path, so it didn't care about anything after that. So in that way, it was, it was very efficient. It would only retrieve the project ID if you were searching for something based on that. And if it found that it didn't match this, then it sort of skipped ahead and it didn't worry about checking any other of the search criteria because we failed one, it didn't matter if you matched the others. Well, in now with the printf option, we could very well find ourselves in a state where we want to print the project ID for a file, but we don't necessarily want to search on that. We might search on file size and then print the project ID. So what we did was we took sort of a, uh, kind of went with the most naive basic approach. And that was if the printf option was specified, we simply set a flag that said gather all. And so any place where file metadata was gathered, we then forced it to go ahead and gather it, uh, whether or not it was needed for searching. So in this case, we would simply change that um, if conditional to say, you know, if you searching for the project ID, you want to gather it, or if we specify the printf option, go ahead and gather that too, because we might need it later uh, to print things out for the printf string. Um, there are a couple of warnings and caveats about the, uh, the new changes that I wanted to share. Uh, one of the first things is that LFS find will not work on non luster files if the dash printf option is specified. Uh, I don't know if many people use that before, but LFS find would actually work on a non luster file system just fine. But now since we're, you know, supporting the idea of like printing things like stripe count, stripe size, those things just don't make sense for non luster files. So if you try to run this with the printf option uh, on non luster files, you will get an error. Um, there is the potential that this could add some additional load to MBS servers if the printf option is used and you did something like, say, you're trying to match all the files. So if you just said, find every file and print up all this information about it, because I want to get things like path name, stripe counts, and file sizes for every file in my file system. Uh, I mean, traditionally, that would add some load to with the printf option, we're basically forcing the command to gather as much information about each file as it can. Uh, so if we're printing out the stripe count, but it also means we're gathering all the stripe size, we're getting all the up-to-date stat information from the OSTs and things like that. Uh, so e, we could be forcing the command to gather file metadata that it won't be using. And so that could conceivably add to the load and uh, as I was preparing these slides, fortunately, I recently discovered an odd behavior with a few edge cases, mostly related to the percent LO uh, output for non-instantiated components, which is something that we'll be looking into. Uh, the good news, though, is that the way this is set up, if you do not use the printf option, all the original code paths should remain unchanged. You shouldn't incur any penalty uh, or see any uh, different behavior from using LFS find if you don't use the new option. Uh, some of the future work and potential improvements uh, that we're considering doing uh, are adding other potential format directives. You know, we looking at maybe adding things like say percent U and percent G for user group names. We print out the numeric user and group IDs, but not sort of user friendly names. Uh, you know, we could also add things that potentially print uh, component flags for composite files. Now, one thing that can be done is to work on improving the efficiency of the printf uh, string parsing and formatting. Right now, uh, every time there's a file that's matched, we basically uh, reparse the string serially and uh, write uh, the characters to a buffer. And then we replace, of course, the directives with whatever's information we gather for the current file. And then that buffer gets printed to standard output. 
So a better way of doing that would actually be to sort of perform a single pass, tokenize the string in a way that could be reused without having to be reparsed uh, all the time. And probably the, the biggest improvement would be to be more selective in gathering the metadata. Uh, ideally, what we would want to do is we would look at the um, search criteria that was specified for the LFS find and then parse the printf string to see what information was printed there. And based on sort of the union of those two things, make a decision on what things need to be collected and what things don't need to be collected. And then make sure that we're only gathering the things that we absolutely need. Um, and one of the other improvements is, of course, to add to the test cases in the Sandy script as well as improve upon them. Because uh, as I've recently found out, uh, we came across an edge case that hadn't been tested uh, by these scripts. And so there's clearly a little bit more work that needs to be done there as well. And of course, uh, one of the biggest things that will help us is feedback from the community. So if you try out this feature and find a bug, please uh, file a JIRA ticket so that we know about it and can look into that. Uh, I'd like to go ahead and acknowledge uh, a few people. Uh, first is uh, Anjus George. Uh, this implementation was done in conjunction with her. We both worked on this together. Uh, so she's as much responsible for this improvement as I am. Uh, we'd both like to thank James Simmons for his help in explaining some of the black magic that happens inside the Lustra code, helping us understand how things flow, uh, what the different calls do. And I'd also like to give a big thanks to Andreas. Uh, he provided some very detailed code reviews for us, a lot of useful feedback, and had a lot of patience with our many iterations as we were trying to get this feature off the ground. Uh, and of course, this uh, research was also supported by the Oak Ridge Leadership Computing Facility. Uh, I'd be happy to take any questions. Thanks, Rick. Um, we do have some questions. So I'm going to first start with um, Andreas made a comment that the LFS find printf um, percent capital L options match the uh, corresponding short uh, option letters that are used on the switches for LFS get straight. So yeah. that should make it easy for people to remember. Um, first question is from Anton Sterenlicht. If I mispronounce your name badly, I'm sorry, Anton. Um, is LFS find a good metadata benchmark? Uh, I would probably not use it as a metadata benchmark. I mean, it, it could potentially be used as a way to stress test the metadata servers. Uh, but as far as benchmarking things, I think there would just be a bit uh, too much, you know, variation in performance. I think something like, MD test or something that was written specifically to test for certain metadata operations would be a better, uh, something better to do. But I, you could conceivably use LFSI just to beat up on the MDS servers if you're looking to stress test things. Thanks, and next question from Alex K. Um, is a suggestion, follow with a question. Um, perhaps the implementation of the, um, LFS find dash dash printf could also have a JSON output format so that that could be um, piped through something like JQ, which you could then add, you know, query options to. Yeah, absolutely. That was something uh, that could be added. Actually, when we first started this work, one of the things we were expecting to be able to add was actually a dash YAML flag so that all the information that was gathered, you know, if you specify dash YAML, it would basically dump all the information it had in a YAML uh, output instead of just selecting specific things. You could get everything all at once. The problem we ran into when we were implementing that was uh, we were attempting to reuse as much of the existing, you know, code as possible. So there were, you know, there was already a function for like, you know, LFS get print out in a YAML output. And so our plan was, okay, well, we'll just make use of that. When we get uh, file information, we can call those same functions and we can print out all of this file information in YAML format already. But what we quickly discovered was that 
those functions weren't written to be very general purpose functions. They were sort of uh, written, you know, or at least appear to be written within the context of like LFS, Git, Stripe, things like that, and designed for those purposes. So there was some very odd behavior in certain circumstances with when we tried to use it to print general things out, we found that certain information wouldn't get printed out in certain circumstances and formatting was hard to do because it wasn't just a really a generalized, you know, YAML print function that was meant to be reused over and over again. Uh, and so the complications we came across there were just a little bit too difficult to be solved quickly. And we wanted to have this feature available in 215. So for the moment, we've kind of put that on the back burner and we may loop around to that uh, again and try to implement something like that. All right, thanks, Rick. Um, you, I think you answered what I was gonna ask is my last question was, um, when this would be available. So it sounds like this has been landed in 2.15? Yeah, yeah. So the initial implementation is in uh, in 2.15, so it will be there. Uh, so people can go ahead and test it out and report back any bugs that they find to us. Let us know so we can start working on improvements.